Imagine the scent of gunpowder, the thunderous charge of the cavalry, the clashing of swords, and the relentless volleys of cannon fire. The date is September 12, 1683. We press the like button and hit subscribe, and we are at the Battle of Vienna. In the center of this chaos is a man, John III Sobieski, the last of the long line of great kings of Commonwealth, leading one of the largest cavalry charges in history. This was the moment the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, the bulwark of Christianity, saved Europe from the Ottoman Turks. And yet, just over a century later, this mighty state, this beacon of resilience, would be wiped off the map. What happened? Born in 1386 from the Union of Kruo, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was a unique political entity, a hybrid between a kingdom and a republic. An expansive realm stretching from the Baltic to the Black Sea, it rose to prominence due to its innovative political system, the Golden Liberty. This system ensured nobles' participation in governance, making it one of the earliest proponents of democracy. However, these very liberties sowed the seeds for its decline. As the state reached its zenith in the 16th century, the Liberum Veto, a parliamentary mechanism allowing any deputy to halt the legislative process, increasingly paralyzed the Commonwealth. Power-hungry magnates and foreign influences exploited this system, leading to internal divisions and political anarchy. Multiple conflicts like the Northern Wars and the Khmelnytsky Uprising crippled its economy and devastated its population. The final nails in the coffin were the three partitions of Poland-Lithuania. It began in 1772, with Prussia, Russia and Austria greedily carving up its territories diminishing the Commonwealth to a mere shadow of its former glory. By 1795, with the third and final partition, the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth was erased from the world map. The consequences were devastating. The Polish-Lithuanian and other Commonwealth people found themselves subjects of foreign powers, their political identities erased, their cultures suppressed. Especially in Poland, the dominant powers launched a cruel campaigns to root out Polish culture and identity. Between the first partition in 1772 and the end of the Second World War in 1945, Poland bore an appalling toll. Historical estimates suggest as much as 20% of the Polish population was killed in this period due to wars, uprisings and genocides. Yet despite this brutal oppression, its legacy lived on in the hearts and minds of the various peoples of the former Commonwealth, inspiring countless uprisings, fueling a rebirth of their cultures, and ultimately leading to the establishment of their nations in the 20th century. In the end, the story of the Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth is a cautionary tale of the fragile balance between liberty and stability, a testament to the resilience of nations and cultures, and an epic saga of a realm that went from saving Europe to being consumed by it. But above all, it's a story that reminds us of the high price nations might end paying when they lose their sovereignty. Thank you for watching.